Dr. Rob Zadiska sporting the New York Giants hat. Husker Red. I, I'm literally pulling up the game on the on the NFL Network on my phone right now. Who are they playing today? Got the Cowboys. Got a divisional rivalry wow. game going. Although, I, I can totally stomach the Cowboys. Can't stand Philly. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with Washington. I'm fine with Dallas. Cardinals are okay. What is it about Philly that you don't like? Okay, you know the whole city of brotherly love thing? Yeah. Man, screw that. Those guys are, it's just, that is a city filled with hatred for humanity. (laughs) Hatred for humanity? It is nasty, nasty people. Great city, love the history. If you get a chance, love Philadelphia. Well, you know who's a big Eagles fan, right? Zach Bryan, he just got arrested the other day. You see him go nuts on the cops? Oh, I feel bad because I love his music. His music's great. Yeah, but which was funny. My my youngest daughter and a bunch of her friends went down to his concert in Lincoln a couple weeks ago. Yeah, didn't you go too or not? I thought you were. Going. I did not. Jennifer went down, dropped him off, hung in Lincoln with some friend for, with some college friends, um, and then brought everybody back home afterwards. But Piper went with a bunch of with a bunch of friends from here in the area. It, I, I mean, he'll he'll recover from. It. In fact, I actually think. I almost thought for a minute it was a publicity stunt because all of a sudden you've got the you've got the mug shot out there. He's the bad boy. He's he, the, he's he's the outlaw country. And then they released the dash cam video. So I watched all of that, and I'm like, this almost seems like a publicity stunt. <laughs> that Zach I, Bryan's I become even a bigger it. star because well, of this. And I haven't watched any of it. He released a statement that was incredibly apologetic. And, and I mean, he was talking up the police involved and basically saying, I mean, these basically kind of put out that statement saying they were doing their job and he, he feels really bad for putting them in the position they were in to have to deal with them. And he was just an idiot. He was just a total idiot. All he had to do was yeah. let, because it was his bodyguard or security guard that got picked up for speeding. And he was wondering what was taking so long. He's like, this is the second time in three days. You know, I, I, I think he was just frustrated. All I know is this, is if a cop tells me I'm going to go to jail or get arrested, the last thing you want to say is, all right, let's go. And that's what he did. He's like, all right, let's, I'll go to jail. And then they cuffed him up. He's like, I'm just, I'm just bullshitting here. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Actually, if a cop tells me anything, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Yes. And the cop says, it's if, not if that he hard. says I'm going to jail, I'm going to go to jail and I will figure it out later. G- good general rule of thumb, don't fight cops. What what I thought was interesting is the cops didn't know who he was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, unless you're like a Garth Brooks type. I, I got to be honest, I, if I saw Zach Bryan, like on the street, I'm not sure I'd know that's who it was. Well, I, as, well maybe with the mustache that he has. But, yeah. I, but I know what you're saying. I mean, it's you, you take. Here's the thing: you take people. I, I call it out of the element. Yeah. And, and people don't recognize you when you're out of that element. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you see, let's say Taylor Swift, just randomly walking down the street in downtown Omaha, you're gonna be like. Man, that was weird. Looks like Taylor Swift. That cow looks just like Taylor Swift. That actually happened to me in downtown Omaha about three or four years ago. You saw Taylor Swift? No, I saw Molly Ringwald. And you're like... Was it her? Oh, yeah, it was, because she was in town. But you're like, yeah, that could be Molly Ringwald, but I remember her from The Breakfast Club and 16 Candles, (laughs) and she doesn't quite look like that right now. Then to come up, like, two days later, oh, Molly Ringwald was in town. I'm like, oh, it was Molly Ringwald. So here's here's my celebrity story. So when I was with the Giants, there was this dive bar in lower Manhattan called Hogs and Heifers. Hogs and Heifers? Hogs and Heifers. That's a porn movie. No, it was a biker bar. <laughs> like oh, hogs, hogs like and heifers. Like hogs as in bikes. <laughs> yeah. So it was the I just <laughs> So it was the biker bar that the movie Coyote Ugly was based upon. Okay. And so it's like they serve PBR, Bud Heavy, Jack, and Southern Comfort. That's it. That's all they serve. That's all they had. 
Like I remember we went there and one of the, like we would go there every, usually it was a, so NFL teams, usually you play the game on Sunday, practice Monday, you got Monday night off and Tuesday off. So our Friday night, let's cut loose was always Monday night. So we would always go to hogs and heifers on Monday night. And it was like, and we're talking, it was kind of an eclectic mix of celebrities who didn't want to be recognized, but wanted to just go drink and hang out. And honest to God, hell's angels, like, like the kind of hell's angels that would stab you at, at a Led Zeppelin concert in California okay. type hell's angels. Not, not like the. 40 year old dudes who have a biker club and they had the hell's angels patch because they yeah. think it looks cool yeah no it was where the real the real ones okay. hung out at and then a bunch of new york giants like that was the three but they gr- didn't fuck with the giants did they no we'd no. hang out and drink with those guys okay. all the time. anyway we got along with those guys great anyway we're hanging out there drinking one night playing pool bs and with, with with our hell's angels buddies and I look over at one of the pool tables, and one of one of my teammates was a guy named Jerry Reynolds with the Giants. And I look over, and Jerry's playing pool with this guy, and I, I, I like nudge my wife, and I'm like, hey, that guy Jerry's playing with looks just like Tim Roth, the actor from Pulp Fiction. You know who Tim Roth is? Which one? No, I don't. I'm trying to think which one he so was. You're okay. You remember the movie Pulp Fiction? Oh, yes. Remember the British actor, like, okay, Honey oh, yeah. Bunny, yes. when they robbed the yes. diner? So Tim Roth. Yeah, he's you, been in a bunch of stuff. So, oh, he's been in a ton of stuff. Okay. So, um, So Pulp Fiction had just come out the previous year. And so I, I'm like, hey, Jen. Looks like Jerry's playing playing pool with that dude from that guy looks just like the actor from Pulp Fiction. My wife goes, Rob, that's because it is the actor from Pulp Fiction. So we ended up hanging out like BS and playing pool with Tim Roth look at, half the look night. At you. So, you know, well, he, that was but that was the way that that was kind of the way this place was. Now this was then it kind of blew up a few years later after Coyote Ugly came out. Now it's like uh now it's like a huge. It, it's like guitars and Cadillacs kind of place. It's, you know, he was it lost in, its charm. Besides, so. Uh, so he must be pretty close with Quentin Tarantino because he was in Reservoir Dogs, Hateful Eight. So yep. he's one of those. those he's guys. been in all of them. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Not great guy. He's maybe like like five foot one. Really small you know, dude. Well, he's British. Yeah. They're all they're all like five that means one. so he's five one and bad teeth is what you're saying. I don't know about the teeth, but he's he, all, all British people are like five one, five two. It's a thing. Hey, he's, he's five foot seven. Owen's <laughs> <laughs> looking it up. Owen's looking it up. That's research. And by the way, Owen, if uh, uh, when you make it big and, and we ever get the the tour van to work again, uh, if a cop picks you up when you're on tour, don't don't lip off. Just do what they say to do. Yeah, lots absolutely. of yes sirs, no ma'ams. Goes a long way. That's what I'm planning on. So. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out because he was in Oklahoma, right? Um, he was going to go to the Eagles game today. Yeah. You're Zach fucking Brian. Why aren't you flying? Why are you in a SUV with your dog? Get a private jet, hop on the jet, and fly. I kind of respect that. No, though. I don't. I don't at all. Get on a jet. Make life easy for yourself. Save some money. Had the record had, company. Okay, basically. so here's here's okay, so here's my take on that. So when I was with the Giants, we had a our starting middle linebacker, Corey Widmer. He was a Montana State guy. Yeah. So when he when he signs with the Giants, he's got it, I mean, this is 1994, 1995. Corey had like it was like an 86 Ford Bronco, which now would be worth a mint, but at the time it would it was like, yeah, he's got this piece of crab total beater SUV from 10 years prior. He he's after, after his rookie contracts up, Corey renegotiates with the giants gets his new contract. He's the starting middle linebacker gets this million dollar a year contract, which back in 1995, 96, that, that's big money. That was a big contract at the time. He goes and buys a new 
used SUV. <laughs> like this is 96. He buys like a 92 Ford Explorer. That's Damn. his that's his new car. Well, he, and he's probably got a gazillion but dollars today because the way he's well, saved. Well, he does, but that's that's what I'm saying. That that it's it's that same kind of yeah. it's that kind of thought process. Hey, what kind of beer are you drinking, man? Well, so I got a, a again. We're we're still digging through the Jason Werner pile from well, Pennsylvania, and I've so. got a different one. You you got the Jason Werner pile. I got the uh, uh, Steve Swanstrom pile, here. which Swanstrom always hooks us up. So this is uh, so it's Victory Brewing, which I got. Okay, my eyes are it. Downington, Pennsylvania. Sounds like a Downton Abbey. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, a British. Sounds like a like a suburb of <laughs> London. Anyway, so it's Downington, PA. So Victory, which we I, we've actually had a fair amount of Victory brewing. Yeah. So this would be their Dirt Wolf IPA. So it's their double IPA. And so and you got me a, a, a Berry Monkey, which is a fruited sour triple, also from Victory. Yeah, so I'll be drinking oh. that later. I'm actually drinking a New Glarus, uh, thirty year anniversary quadruple. Okay, so here's a question. Yeah. New Glarus has been out for 30 years. Who would have thought it? 1993 to 2023. Huh. Okay, well, that made me feel really old when you said 1993. This is a Belgian quad. God damn, dude. Uh, with Czech, German, and American malted barley, uh, rich, luxur- uh, luxurious raisin, vanilla, dried fruit, and uh, dark chocolate notes. Here's How is it? I like it. I can only drink about one can of it, though. You know what I mean? It's like one of those, oh, this is really good. It's a dessert beer. It is. It's like very, very filling. So this came from the CEO of Central Federal Credit Union, uh, Steve Swanstrom. Who, his, Steve, Steve always hooks us up with but, the new glare. Because you know why? His daughter's in, in uh, dental school up at Marquette. And so nice. every time he runs up to Marquette, which he does a lot, he's always bringing beer back. Which and, is really good, and that's super okay. It, we're it, fine yeah. with that. It, 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 and again, uh, if you want to send us beer, we're more than happy to accept your beer shipments. Uh, just give us a, a, an email. I, we, we still need to talk to Jeff from uh, Cross Strain and find out, like, what exactly is the difference between a quad? Well, no, a no, double. No, 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 no. I want to know the difference between Fairy Nectar, yeah, and Fairy Nectar. Sioux Falls blend. I think it's just... I, now, they're going to tell me something different. It's fucking marketing. It's all it is. It's I, marketing. I did check the label, and it does look like it's a different selection of hops. It's, okay. it's a, they're, they're, it looks like there are a different variety of hops. I just want to know like, what makes you decide to do like a regular fairy nectar versus a Sioux Falls blend. Like, is there some kind of like Northern hops that you put in this? Thing? Who, who knows? But, uh, I just saw Jeff I the other day. Know, though. He was at Brouhaha, which benefited, uh, Habitat for Humanity. That was up at, uh, uh, 132nd Pacific. So I, I stopped there by there. Had, had some really good beer. I had some cross train, had the cross train makes good beer. It, did, it really, really does. So, um, Dr. Rod, we've, we've avoided now for 15 minutes not talking about Nebraska <laughs> losing to Colorado. And I want to st- I want to start like this. Listen, we know that Nebraska got beat by Colorado, okay? Uh, we, can, we can dive into a lot of it. We can get into it, uh, the turnovers. But I'm going to start with this. And it's what I hear on social media. It's what I see every time I open Twitter, now called X or Facebook. And it's the what if game. What if... Nebraska would have hired Deion Sanders. What if Nebraska wouldn't have got rid of Casey Thompson? What if this? Stop it. You, you, you cannot live in the past. You cannot really even live in the future with future recruits. You have to live in the present. Here's the deal. You just have to – you can't sit there and have that analogy. Well, Dion would have done the same thing in Nebraska. You don't know that. It, it makes for a good argument, though, and I do understand that. Now, a couple of things that I would like to point out, okay. not to toot my own horn too much here, but I said last week during the podcast, A, it doesn't matter if it's FCA, FCS, HB, HCBU, uh, HBCU, sorry, um, school that Dion came from with, with with Jackson State. The guy's a good coach. I said that last week during the podcast. What he did at Jackson State was very impressive. To do what he did, you have to be a good coach. 
And it doesn't matter what division you're coming from to be able to do what he did. You got to be a halfway decent coach to do what he did. Absolutely. That's point one I made. Number two, I said everybody kind of kind of bagged on him about the the whole roster flip. So as of now, Dion basically holds sort of the unofficial record for the most transfer portal players since the initiation of the transfer portal. It's like 72 players or 68 players, whatever it is. Nobody has flipped a roster with that many guys as Dion did at Colorado. And he was kind of drugged through the media for it. Most well, because- people said this isn't going to work. And I'm sitting there going like, I watched Colorado play a handful of games last year. I, I mean, I specifically remember watching the Colorado TCU game in 2022 and thinking, oh my God, Col- all the jokes about how Colorado's roster this year looks like high school kids. They look like high school kids playing on the field against TCU last year. There was no way they improve without doing that. And when he did that, the thought process going through my mind was like, I watched those guys play. He had to do something, and any change is going to be good over what they had. Yeah, I... They were the, the, so bad. They were horrible last year, and it was top to bottom on that roster. The other thing, and you know, I, I really focused more on Shadur, his son at quarterback, that it's everybody's, again, like it's an FCS kid. No. It, it's it's no. an HBCU kid. And I'm like, sitting here going, okay, that doesn't matter. The kid was a four-star quarterback coming out of high school with power five offers, originally committed to play at Florida State and backed out of a Florida State commit to play for his dad at Jackson State. That's a power five quarterback right there. You know what? And what? it's now the other thing is that I really didn't think about that a couple of people pointed out to me on Twitter. Same thing with Travis Hunter. Yeah, Travis Hunter, who was one of the top-ranked recruits in the nation coming out of high school. And when I say top-ranked, I'm not talking about, well, okay, he was a five-star kid. He was one of the top five kids in the nation coming out of high school. Depending on which ranking service you looked at, I think the lowest I found him was seventh in the nation. The highest I found him was number one. Dion recruited him, got him to go to Jackson State for a year, and then follow him to Colorado. Remember when it's, that happened? I mean, even Saban was pissed about it. I mean, all those coaches were a little pissed saying... He worked the system. He did work the system. And guess what? It was all within the rules. But, and here's what's going to drive people nuts. Week number one against TCU, Fox Big Noon Saturday is live at TCU for the Colorado game. Week number two, Fox Big Noon Saturday is live at in Boulder for the Colorado-Nebraska game. Next week, Fox Big Noon Saturday is live for the Colorado State-Colorado game. And if they win that, I guarantee they're going to be live the following week for the Oregon showdown. Okay, well... He's he's getting all the TV time that is... I mean, it's free. The the publicity that Colorado's getting right now is... You can't even measure the the amount of free publicity. Whether you love them or hate them... Do you want to watch it? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. As a doctor, I feel sorry for him. I'm not a doctor. I'm going to ask you, you're the doctor. I actually don't know the condition. But, but, I mean, he's, he's had blood clots. Yeah. And now, I mean, he's limping really bad. There was fear yeah. that they would have to amputate his foot. But you see him at the end of the game. That he's dude limping. is limping. He's limping pretty bad. He is. I don't know the condition specifically, so I'm not going to talk about it. He's got some health concerns. Regardless, the guy can coach, he can recruit, he can run a program. And he's shown that. Now, have you ever seen anybody that you've seen the media want to fail as much as they want Dion to fail? I don't think the media wants him to fail. I think opposing fans want him to fail. I think the media just wants him. 
Yeah, but, you know, Stuart Mandel from SI, he was on there saying, you know, this is going to be the most tragic mistake we've ever seen in college football. I think Pat Forty's been a little... But you know what I think of those guys anyway, because you had the pretty people out there. Okay, we always call the pretty people who think they who think last, they actually run the game of football yeah. because they write for big organizations. Last week, you called him... You called Dion a disruptor. He is a disruptor. And he is. Guess what? It works. What he's doing works. Now, there's a little caveat here. And, and what that is, I'm going to throw out there. He, they played a TCU team that is severely down compared to last They're year. They're shit. That is a different team than it was the last two years. Okay? I, I hate saying this. Nebraska's not good this year. They're not. They're not. But you understand where a fans good team. You understand where fans are coming. They're, they're, right away, they're saying if Dion can do that at Colorado in year number one, yeah, why can't, why can't Matt Rule do it at Nebraska? Okay, because Dion had two of the top recruits in the country in his back pocket, ready to go at Jackson State, and Shadur and Travis Hunter. I, I mean, I, I would put Travis Hunter right now up there as a leading Heisman candidate. And Dion has said as much. He's dropped oh, the word Heisman. He, one hundred percent. The guy, the the guy is a defensive back. Definitely a Heisman candidate. He's another Charles Woodson. Except get, he's better on offense than Charles Woodson. He actually dropped the Heisman line for Shadour yesterday. When remember when he got penalized for taking off his helmet? He yeah. Said, he goes, that's a Heisman play. Yeah. I um. He's always selling, man. You know, always be selling. Yep. Um, I, I get it. Shadur's really good. The The thing that was interesting to me about this game is, is when you look at Nebraska right now, Nebraska's defense is playing, I think, better than what I thought people thought it would They're be. They're good. I thought they, they, you and I were texting. I was in Des Moines yesterday. You and I were texting during the game. And at one time, you just said, they're gassed. They are just gassed. They lived on the field. Here's the thing. For two and a half quarters, Nebraska's defense controlled that game. They just ran out of gas. There's only so much time you can spend on the field. At some point, you're going to run out of steam. And the offense needs to control some clock, and they need to score some points. And Nebraska's offense did neither, I, and is not capable of doing either right now. I'm going to ask you something: Did the did the better team win yesterday? And I and I say I about midway through the third quarter, right I think now, after, right now I'm going to say yeah because I I think Nebraska. I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to Nebraska's that. Nebraska's got potential. The, there's stuff I saw that I really liked. Right now, when you look at the Minnesota game and the Colorado game, right now, I'm sold on the defense. I've got, like I'm, I'm, I've got buy-in on defense. I'm, I'm, I'm fine right there. I, My problem is offense, and I do not have buy-in. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm going to go against how I even started the the, the talk in, in the what if. I, I don't want to hear the what if Casey Thompson was still quarterback. I don't want to hear what if. We Deion should Sanders. talk about that. It's but, relevant. But hold on. We, we're going to get to it. But what if Nebraska doesn't turn the ball over four times yesterday? Who wins that football game? Nebraska. Okay. That's what I was asking. Who's the better team overall? And I thought so too. Now this is why I sent out. A, but, but I texted team, you and said this was nineteen. Team. This was nineteen ninety nine. Nebraska at Texas and Dan Alexander and Crow Buckholder are fumbling the ball I over the get place. It. The, the the thing is though is that Nebraska's identity right now is a team that turns the ball yes. over. They're they're going to turn the ball over. They're going to have inopportune penalties. That that's Nebraska right now. You can't discount those two things and I, say, "Well, they're the better team." No, they're not. That counts against it, you being the better team. Okay, one thing that that I had to chuckle at as but now the, here's the other thing: Colorado's got chinks in the armor. A lot. A crap team that turns the ball over a shit ton. Had you like, I mean, w was neck and neck with you mid third quarter, well, and then the wheels kind of fell off because the defense was living on the field. They got gas. The offense is turning the ball over. 
that'll kill any team. Well, and this is why I, I had to laugh and at the end of the game when the Fox Sports reporter interviewed Deion Sanders in the tunnel and said, talk about your defense forcing four turnovers. I'm like, forcing what? Yeah, they didn't force jack shit. Yeah, and, and Dion got into his press conferences. You know, I got to really credit our defense today, forcing turnovers. I'm like, you didn't force anything. I mean, two of them were crappy timing on the motion guy, <laughs> the ball hitting them. You know, I mean, that was just one of those things. I'm sitting there looking and just going like, oh, my God, talk about shooting yourself in the foot. You know, I had a couple flashbacks to my days of when I was on the road and covering Nebraska on a daily basis. One was 1999 in the Texas game. Another one, God, I'm trying to think what year it was, and it was Jamal Lord was the quarterback. And I'll oh. never forget, and, and Matt Rule popped into my head this year the, because everybody wanted Harburg to come in in the second half, right? Everybody's like, you got to bench Sims, do it. And yesterday in the in the news conference, Rule said there was never any discussion whether Harburg was going to come into the to the game in the second half. It was always going to be Jeff Sims. And I remember Frank Solich when they were pressing him. I think it was Jamal Lord and Kurt Dukes. Remember the Kurt Dukes showdown? Remember oh Kurt? Oh my Dukes? gosh! Yeah. And I remember Frank Solich getting just getting grilled with questions, and finally goes on Jamal. Listen, he's the best we got. Yeah, I, he's I remember the that. best we got, and that's and that's the thing right now is when you look at when you look at Sims, he's the best they got. His running ability is still pretty yes. damn impressive. I mean, his touchdown run was great. His ability to run the ball is better than probably any of the running backs on the team right now. That's kind of saying something when we're talking about the quarterback. Yeah, Can he progress through reads in a passing situation? No. Is his, I mean, his throwing arm's good. It is. I watched when a couple receiver, highlights today. I'm like, God. When the receiver's open... And it's and it's that and it's that first read when he's throwing to his first maybe his second read, the ball's there. It's accurate. It's arriving on time. It's arriving with pop. It's great. It's it's one of those where everybody's covered, and he has to sit back there and kind of do okay. I got to buy some time. I got to wait for a guy to get open, and once the guy's open, then I got to make the throw can't do it to save his life and that's a mark of a good quarterback and it's just he's not the he doesn't have the capability to do that now that being said his running ability is flat out amazing and i don't know if nebraska scores their first touchdown yesterday if sims isn't in there at quarterback so that's that's the thing that's that that's bothersome about this is you're sitting here going Oh my God, this guy's costing us games with these turnovers. On the flip side, I'm sitting here going, he's also keeping these games closer than they would be otherwise. The uh and and a couple of those turnovers, two of those turnovers were completely now I, I don't know how they're doing it in terms of timing the snap with the motion guy, but two of those uh, two of those turnovers were due specifically to mismanagement of timing with yeah. a motion guy. Now, is that the quarterback? One, one hit the receiver right, right in, the, in the hip. Yeah, and that's the thing is I'm sitting there going like, is the quarterback doing the little hand clap thing and that's throwing the timing off? Is he doing it too early, too late? Is is it a center thing? Is it a the, the motion man himself has their timing off? Th these are things I don't know. So I, I'm looking at your screen here. You're looking up Casey Thompson. I am. A super mediocre night last yeah, night. Yeah, he was 23 of 42, Ohio. 180 yards and two interceptions. Yeah, it's and I made that point a couple of we, – we got in a discussion on Twitter today where – People are like, oh, man, I want Casey back. And I'm like, okay, a couple of things. I'm like, Casey had his bright spots. He really did. And I liked Casey Thompson a lot. Great kid, strong leader, excellent quarterback. He had some bad games. He really did. Yeah. He had some bad games. He also had Trey Palmer, who guess what? Is scoring touchdowns for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now. Trey Palmer was a legit NFL guy. 
So we don't have a legit NFL wide receiver right now. Not in the least. And that's I, I think Trey Palmer helped a lot in terms of what you saw from Nebraska last year. He's gone. So you remove Trey Palmer from the equation last year with Casey Thompson. Casey doesn't look half as good as he did last year. So it, it's it, – I understand the coach's thought process where you've got a guy, Trey Palmer's gone. Um, Casey had a little bit of an injury bug the last year or so. He really did. And now he's coming off of a shoulder surgery, and you're not going to be able to get even a remotely reasonable look at the guy until early fall camp. That's the first time that you're going to be able to get a good look at Casey Thompson for rat mu- rat mules. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. There. <laughs> for Matt Rule's staff to get a good look at Casey Thompson, it wasn't going to happen until August of 2023. I'm going to sound and like it, a- And that's one of those things, like at that point – are you going to wait that out and hope to God it works out, or do you go get a go get a transfer portal guy? They went and got a transfer yeah. portal guy, and Casey was like, "Yeah, they went and got a transfer portal guy. I'm going to transfer myself," and he did. It's probably best bl- for both programs, and I don't blame him. No, I don't blame Casey for doing that at all. I don't blame the coaching staff for looking at the situation and saying, "We got a guy." who a huge chunk of his production was due to the fact that he had an NFL quarterback, or I'm sorry, an NFL wide receiver to throw to, and that NFL wide receiver is now in the NFL. He's gone. And you look at who's left on the roster from a wide receiver standpoint, And you're looking at that quarterback and going, he's coming off of multiple injuries. He's coming off of off-season shoulder surgery. And we're not going to be able to really get a good look at this kid until August. If I'm that coaching staff, the first thing I do is I go hit the transfer portal for another quarterback, which I know when I do it, it's going to drive Casey out of town. And I I don't blame him for leaving. Neither do I. Do you believe Matt Rule? Because I do. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna start sounding like a fan here, and I'm not. But it, it's God, just, you are such a big Husker it, homer. But I do believe. Why do you hate the Hawkeyes, dude? <laughs> hey, they won yesterday. Went on the road and won. Dude, he, they've got two mediocre wins. Has Brian Ferentz hit 25 points oh, yet no, in the game? Hasn't hit it yet. <laughs> hasn't hit it. In fact, they had 20 yesterday, and the defense scored six of them. So they and then what? 24 against Utah State? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the the defensive power of the Utah State is what's the Utah State Aggies? The Aggies, they're the, the Aggies, Aggies also. Though I do believe Matt Rule when he says this team is better than what it's performing like. I know it's a, it's I a complicated do, I answer. I don't, I don't deny that either, and I say that especially when I look at the defensive side of the ball. Defense is playing well. Running backs are playing well. I I like what I'm seeing from the tight ends and wide receivers. And and I say that in the sense that I don't see a true clear-cut NFL guy in that group right now. But I see guys going out and they're doing what they're being asked to do. If you don't Um, have stupid penalties, you don't turn the football over, they're 2-0. They're they're at worst one and one with a win over Minnesota, which is is a preseason contender at least in the West Division. Yeah, they. I mean, I think they're two and zero. You clean up the turnovers. Yes, they beat Minnesota, which I mean, that that's the thing that was kind of unexpected. You just said if they don't turn the ball over four times, they beat Colorado. Probably. That's why I I had them two and zero. Oh. It's they they've got to score some points, and we just have God, we have not seen that yet I, I, either. Well, welcome, hey, being an Iowa fan, welcome to the world of not scoring points and winning <laughs> football games, right? I, I mean, don't know if we've got <laughs> Iowa special teams and defense quite yet. We're working on it. But I had Nebraska winning the first two games, which why I had Nebraska hitting the over mark of six and a half, and my smart ass son, who's now 
producing this show. Uh, Owen, are you listening to this? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, because he's been waiting all day to give me shit because he's like, Dad, you're not going to hit the over. You're I, not. I, I mean, I, did, I was saying, um, I didn't say it on this podcast or anything, but when he was saying he was expecting seven wins this season, I thought he was out of his mind. But I, I'm still going back and look. At, so, I mean, it's kind of the thing with Dion where I said, okay, when you look at Dion Sanders objectively, what he did at Jackson State was outstanding. That's going to trans. He did so well there. There's no way that doesn't translate to another. But it's level. not apples to apples. It's apples to apples and a half. Is it like a red delicious to a Fuji? Yeah, <laughs> it it works. It's I, he he was going to do very well no matter what division he's at. And I said that last week. This this isn't new information. I, I believed he's a pretty darn good coach. He's a great recruiter. He had a couple of really good guys in his son, Shadur, and Travis Hunter. Those were guys who could play the game True. at a high level no matter where they were at, and they have continued to prove that. It's, it, it's the same kind of thing at Nebraska – there's a little history there when you look at Rule, same as there is with Dion. Rule's first year, everywhere he's been, has been crap. He's been a one to two win a year guy in that first year. He 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 doesn't try to do this win now kind of thing. He goes and gets his own guys. He develops them for a couple of years. And then you start to see some results. I and I understand the the pressure standpoint of holy cow, everybody's looking at Dion and what he's doing at Colorado right now. Again, I'll still say Nebraska exposed some chinks in the armor. TCU exposed some chinks in the armor. Colorado ain't perfect. No, and it's not going unbeaten. Yeah, not at all. No. This is a team that's going to have two, three, four losses by the end of the year. Are they really good? But they are light years better than what Colorado's been for the last decade. Hey, it's still possible. There are eight teams in the Pac-12 that are ranked in this week's top 25 poll, AP. There's still a possibility that Colorado could finish with a losing record. It yes. would not be out of the 100%. question. 100%. And it's, yeah, there. I, I look at what Nebraska's defense did against Colorado for two and a half quarters. Again, that last kind of late third quarter, all of the fourth quarter, oh my God, they were gassed. They were so tired. Those guys lived on the field. And when your offense isn't scoring points, it does change the dynamic of what you're doing on both sides of the ball. And so I get that as well. And if you're not recognizing that, if you look at that Nebraska-Colorado score and go, oh my God, Colorado dominated that game. No, they really didn't. They dominated a quarter and a half of that game. But that's the difference between controlling a full game and controlling a quarter and a half of the game. So I'm going to ask you this. Nebraska finally gets to play at Memorial Stadium, taking on Northern Illinois uh, this Saturday. Is this a – does Nebraska just need to win or does it need to win big? They just need to win. Okay. Get a win. I mean, this is a Northern Illinois team. They just that, lost to Southern Illinois. They beat Boston College, but Boston College is horrible right now. They're really bad. And Southern's a, an FCS team, so they just lost to an FCS team. Yeah, it's I, I, I feel bad because I think Northern Illinois is a pretty proud program. It is. Hammock's a great coach there. Um, but this is a team that's come into Lincoln and has won in Lincoln before. So you're just saying just a win. I think people want a big think, win. But I, I think that they just need a win. We get a win. I think we're going to, there's going to be, a, okay, we got that win. We got it under a belt. Let's, we'll, we're going to start building off of this now. So you got uh, Northern Illinois and then La Tech, two home games. And, and, then and La Tech, I mean, La Tech's got that. They got DeColdis Crawford. They got athletes, dude. Is DeColdis down there? I think he's La Tech. Can you, can somebody look that up, Owen? Yeah. 
I want to go to work on Decoldus. I thought Decoldus was at La Tech. Huh. Uh, La Tech, by the way, uh, uh, beat FIU yesterday. Or no, 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 no. Oh, no, that was uh, last week or two weeks ago. Uh, beat FIU 22-17, then lost to SMU 38-14, and then won yesterday against uh, Northwestern State, I think it is. Which is a little disturbing because you got a team that's got three games under their belt yeah. already. Yeah, two and one. Uh, they got an offense that uh, puts up some points. But, he is uh, at, at La Tech. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. we, they don't have in Troy, game research. They don't have Troy Edwards, though, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> hey, Betfred is the bonus king. Download the Betfred app today for a limited time. Your 10th pro football bet is on Betfred. Of course, the NFL season started uh, today. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 plus. Wagers are only accepted in the states Betfred is operating. And if you do have a gambling problem, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. By the way, uh, on the year now, 5-0. and I went 3-0 and last week. I'm 2-0 and this week in college football. Yesterday, I was sweating bullets yesterday, man. Because Over which game? I had Oregon plus 6 or minus 6 against, against Texas Tech. They were up two. That was a great game, by the and way. And then Oregon gets the pick six with under a minute to go. <laughs> I'm like dancing. I was dancing in the radio studio. And then the two, I had uh, Ole Miss, I think minus seven. That was close too. And they tacked on a couple late. And I, I just got, I got out of it. So I'm, I'm five and zero oh on the season. Five and zero, oh, baby. I'm just saying. Remember what, what, what Scott Spritzer told us. Yeah. He said, if you're hitting on a season 51, 52, 53%, you're making money. You're doing great. Yeah. Yeah. I I know. And and again, I'm not doing four or five games a weekend. I just sit there and look for the best value I can find. Uh, The only difference was Spritzer told me that last night that he had uh, Texas Tech, not Oregon. And speaking of Scott Spritzer, um, make sure to join us for behind the point spread on Wednesday night. We do it live on YouTube. It's also live on Facebook. He, it, we were. I was going to transition away from the Nebraska game, but Rob, I know you have Scott's information. Rob sent me this this text in the middle of the Nebraska game, and he wanted. He goes, hey, serious question here. Can Scott provide information on turnovers real quickly? And within, what, four minutes, I had an answer like for you. two and a half. This is NFL only. And I think if you listen on Wednesday night, live on YouTube. Scott was going to get us the college gonna numbers. going to get us the college numbers. But this, the, this so, is how important turnovers are in the outcome of a game. It, it is. So so the question I asked was, I asked you, can you text Scott and ask him if there's statistical data regarding how many points a turnover is worth? Because I'm watching that Nebraska game, and I mean, my God, it was brutal with those turnovers. So Scott says significant impact. He said each – now, again, this is NFL numbers. So Scott was working on all NFL stuff at the time. So he said significant impact. Each additional turnover to a team's margin is worth .2 wins. Turnover margin explains – 42% 42% of the variation in regular season wins. And so when you look at a team in terms of that win-loss record, whether they're winning or losing, 42% of the time it's dependent upon turnovers. Teams that win the turnover margin win the, the exact number is 69.6% of their games. But anyway, the way to look at this from the casual fan standpoint you win the turnover margin, you're going to win 70% of your games. So, if so you, 7 out of 10 games, you're going to win if you win the turnover margin. And, and, and if you go back and watch last week's uh, Behind the Point Spread, he did an, an amazing analysis on Jeff Sims in the first half to second half. And this is the kind of information you're going to get on a Wednesday night. I cannot emphasize. Dude, if you're not turning, if you're not tuning in to the Wednesday night behind the point, you're spread, missing out. In terms of how to analyze college football games, the information is out. You, you don't even have to be one and, of the. You don't have to bet anything. You do not have to be a gambler. No. If you just want to know how the statistical analysis plays into the wins and losses. Watch that show. I, and, Which, and the great thing about Scott, he's not on there selling. Uh, call my one eight hundred number. He oh, does not do that. Zero. It is a great now, I conversation. Would, I would say subscribing to his service has got to be worth every penny. Well, but but he'll say this. 
you have to be a serious gambler to make it worth your while. It's not you really cheap. do. And he, he's like, hey, if you're the passive like me, two games a week, I'm not for you. Yeah. You know, because I do $25 a game, right? I'm not his type of client. What did, I thought Scott said to really actually make money. You got to lay money down. I thought he said it's something like you got to be betting $400 a, yeah. a round. Guess what I don't have? I don't have that kind of money. I like just playing with my $25. Okay. I thought you were a big money dude. No, you're, you're the doctor. You're media. You're the doctor. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, fine. <laughs> hey, uh, or I could have been a lawyer, uh, but why would I need to be a lawyer when I have a good friend who's a lawyer and Connor Orr and Orr in Horrigan? Connor's a friend of the podcast, a licensed sports agent in the state of Nebraska, and he works directly with athletes and businesses to help them navigate the ever-changing landscape of name, image, and likeness. He actually sent us a, 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 a thing last week. Did you see a, a kid went from Florida is suing the Florida Collective because so we need to, we need to get uh, Connor on to may, talk. Yeah, about I think that be it's, it's 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 predatory. I was going to say predatory lending, but it's it's sort of predatory nil. I understand what you're saying. It's legal. It, well, here's right the deal. Now, right now, it's currently legal, the, and we've seen people do this before. But guess what, Rob? This is what these guys wanted. We said somebody's going to get taken advantage of. It's just a matter of time. And what happened was this guy from Florida, he signs a professional and contract. this is not the first time this has happened. No. And all of a sudden he gets a notice that, hey, uh, yeah, you owe us 25%. Well, so the, so the way or this is, it 15%. Is, yeah. So the way this is working is what, uh, I, I'm not sure I want to call it agents, but agents, NIL, collectives, et cetera, will do is they'll front – the college athlete money four hundred grand in this case. So that yeah, so they'll front you a huge amount of money. Kind of and cash then, your paycheck now. And then what? Kind of what the terms of the agreement are is we'll give you four hundred thousand dollars now, but you have to give us in return. What is it like? Like fifteen percent of your NFL earnings like for twenty five years. Like. 15% of your pro earnings. That's a loan shark. Exactly. As long as you are earning that professional check. And so what guys are realizing is that they're getting a $400,000 a $400, loan. At and they 15% gotta, interest. And they got to pay back like $7 million <laughs> over, over, over the contract. It's... Oh. It, it's brutal. Now this has been going on for a. It, it's been going on for because I saw some of these popping up a year ago. Yeah, this is not the first time this has happened. It's insane that this is still happening, and guys are still signing these deals. Now the the thing is though, somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, I'm going to give you four hundred thousand now." All you have to give me in return is a paltry 15% of your pro contract. Over 25 years. Exactly. And nobody's playing pro ball for 25 years. Yeah. But in in short, they're fucking you. Big time. Yes. 100%. These kids are getting screwed, which Connor makes a good point. In any of these deals... Go get independent counsel. And, get get a third party yes. who has no dog in the fight. And uh, Connor is also uh, focused on corporate and personal injury litigations in both Nebraska and Iowa. And he can work with you on your business planning, estate planning, and real estate transactions. Call Connor or today at 402 402- 408-6488. Hey, with the home opener for the Huskers on Saturday, head to Husker Hounds to get your game face on. All game faces and corn heads are 25% off. Additionally, all volleyball apparel and Husker jewelry, 25% off. Nebraska's got a pretty good volleyball team. Not, not a bad volleyball team at all. Uh, two locations in the Omaha area, the Superstore at 84th and Center and out west at 171st in Lakeside Hills Plaza, or you can just make it easy on yourself and shop at huskerhounds.com where you get free shipping on orders over Fifty dollars in flat rate shipping of four ninety five on anything under. Which I would add, they will honor all of these, uh, all of the deals online. So if you call in, do the online order, 
all of these sales, all of the deals, they'll honor that online as well. Too. It is not an in-store only. So besides Nebraska, you've seen Dr. Rob wear Michigan State apparel on this podcast quite a bit. Because, oh, dude. Because, well, he's, he's, he's secretly a Sparty. He's always wanted to be a Sparty. Um, Just like you want to be a Husker. Sure. Go ahead. And a cyclone. Yeah, I'm wearing salmon instead of red. And a How's panther. That? <laughs> salmon. Hey, you That's know what? Red. Mark Farley's a good friend of mine. I'd be a panther any day of the week. Mark Farley's a good dude. He's a you would love Mark Farley if you met him. Dude, you. I'm 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 a dude. My dad was a Northern yeah, Iowa see? grad. Um, Mel Tucker has been suspended by the university, and that's a prelim to firing. Yeah, it's just a it, matter. It's of sort time. of like it's sort of like the Pat Fitzgerald suspension um, under a harassment case that's been uh, under investigation by the team's Title IX. Uh, uh, department, and this is an interesting story, man. Basically, remember that guy that 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 woman that uh, Mike Riley brought in a couple years ago when he first started. Because what happened was he was at Oregon State. This woman gets gang raped at there was Oregon a, State. Yeah, so sexual assault at Oregon State, and so in in trying to just make amends, do everything, he he brought her in to talk to, to Nebraska. So she goes around to talk to college campuses, college football teams. She went to Michigan State, and there was a little spark in the air. And Mel Tucker... Well, was, let's, let's be clear here. Okay. But she even says they were... I mean, she has said in her deposition that, yes, they flirted together, they hit it off right away. They had good rapport. They had a good rapport, but there is a hell of a difference between a good rapport and thinking, hey, here's a guy that's bringing me in to be an advocate for yes. this issue. Now, but they continued to talk, and she said they continued to talk several weeks in a row, many times late at night. We're talking about Brenda Tracy. Um, and, tell, and then at one point, Mel Tucker wanted to meet with her, but without her assistant, and she said no. That's like... No. Smart. Yeah, say no. Then apparently, and he's not denied the phone call, he gets on the phone with her and he has what is apparently non-consensual phone sex where he masturbated on the phone and he admitted to it. He admitted to it. I'm a little surprised that it's only a suspension at this point even. Now she says it wasn't consensual. My only thing is, if some dude's jerking off while he's talking to you on the phone, why don't you just hang up? But whatever. Um, that's a little weird. That it, At the same time, too, if that's happening and you interpret that as... Consent? No, as or, some degree of sexual assault. If you hang up, it's basically you've just removed all evidence. That's fair. I'll, I'll give you that. This is so just a weird fucking story, man. He, here's okay. Here's the thing, though. You're the head of a major college football program. Yeah. Massive academic institution. Michigan State is a big school. You're the CEO of a program. You're the CEO of, of a multi-million dollar organization. Why would you put yourself in this position? Why don't you ask the previous head coach in Nebraska? Mike Riley? No. Scott Frost? Scott Frost. Okay, well, I'm sure Scott had his own issues, yeah. but... You know what I'm saying, though. I mean, what I'm saying is... I'll, okay, here, my, my bottom line is is that... I, I'm putting 100% of the blame on Mel Tucker here. 100%. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you. But your your question is why would you're the head coach of a major organization? Yeah. Why do you why would you even locate okay, I don't care how big of a perverted like you and I had this conversation earlier. I think the the point I made is I sit around and I think like, okay, am I normal? Do I have like is I mean, if is, you log on to Pornhub, you like you know, am I normal? Is there anything kinky yeah. like in my brain? Am I off kilter? And then it's like I see this stuff and I'm like, oh hell no. I'm a I, I'm a goddamn Quaker, dude. <laughs> like I see this and I'm like, I am the most 
like boring human being on the freaking planet when I see this. And I'm just like, what the hell is this guy thinking that when you're the head of this organization, why would you not be sitting here going like, I don't care what your kink is. Why the hell would anybody remotely think that you're going to get somebody on the phone? Who who was the uh, and, and have Rex Ryan like feet? Remember that? It was with his wife. <laughs> Still is weird. Okay, hey, fine. I don't care. It's 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 with your wife. Like with Rex Ryan, it was with his goddamn wife. That's okay. Well, as long as she's okay with yeah. it which apparently it was. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I'm thinking Marv Albert biting people here. It's, it's kind of one of those at some point a line gets crossed. And when Mel Tucker's like having masturbation sex over the phone with a... Re- with, hearing you say that makes me laugh. With a renowned sexual assault advocate here yeah, that's the weird thing what the hell are you th- like i'm like that is dude the guy here's the thing the guy sank his own boat he did fuck him that's the weird thing here right listen if if you want to have phone sex with your wife i don't care you want to send dick pics to your wife or girlfriend? I don't care. Do, do whatever you do. If it's I, if it's truly consensual, that's fine. Th- yeah. Here's the thing. Okay. Okay. But, but hold why on, would hold you on, go? Why would you on. do this with somebody who was who was gang raped in a sexual so, assault? And that's advocate. my point. Is like okay, let's let's put this in perspective. Let's say this was 100 percent consensual between these two people. Okay. And this is purely for instance. This is just a hypothetical. Completely hypothetical. Let's say it was consensual. Let's say she was not pressing charges because it was 100% consensual. If you are the head coach of a Power 5 Big Ten football program. You're held to a higher standard. You are the head of a major corporation. Yes. You're held to a higher standard. There is a standard that you don't cross that even if it was 100% consensual, you shouldn't have been any near this situation in any way, shape, or form. And the fact that he was, right now I'm saying... I am shocked he's not currently fired, that it is only a suspension. Well, Which now I say that the firing's coming. And because you know what they're doing now? They're working the buyout. And they can fire him for it cause. Is. The, but, su- the, 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 spe- the suspension is purely, yes. we're going to buy some time here while we figure out how much we're going to pay you but this is to fire you with cause and you're not going to contest and, it. And at the end of the day, it's a gift for Michigan State because there wasn't many of us who didn't think that was the worst contract in the history of college football. I was shocked after one year that he got a $95 million yes. contract. And I, I'm not saying the guy's not a good coach. I appreciated the fact that he beat Michigan his first two years there. Loved it. It was great. But when they they basically locked him down with a lifetime contract, two years in, yeah, and that that was surprising to me. The other big story that involved uh, this time an assistant coach at at Oklahoma. You and I see this one a little bit different. We kind of do. Jeff Levy is the offensive coordinator at OU. His father in law and the grandfather of his children is Art Bryles. The former Baylor coach. Yes. Who, where we, Matt Rule took over with yes. half a staff because half of Art Bryles' roster got... After the game against got and feathered SMU out of town. yesterday, well after the game, Jeff Levy is on the field talking to his father-in-law, who happened to be in an Oklahoma quarter zip or a long sleeve He shirt. was sporting o- OU yeah, gear. Yeah, OU gear. But he was on the field talking to Jeff Levy. And again, this is after most people... Almost everybody's out of the stadium. It's 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 a point where, you know, reporters are walking either to the media room or out of the media room. At that point, a reporter snaps a photo and says Art Bryles on the field, and a shitstorm then ensued. 
And, you know, of course, um, who's the OU coach? I, um, Venables. It? Venables says this is the first to hear about it. Uh, it, it it'll be it, he'll he'll deal with it. Then Castiglione comes out, the AD, basically threw Levy under the bus. Says this should not have happened. Uh, we're gonna deal with it. Blah blah blah. Listen, I understand why people are upset. I really do. Art Bryles is a cancer right now in a lot of circles in college football. Just hear me out real quick. It was after the game. All the family was in town. Most people, 99% are out of the stadium. He comes down the field to talk to his son-in-law. Is it really that big of a deal? In my opinion, yeah, because here's the thing. So do you remember Bryles actually got hired by Grambling? Yeah, and then got fired. And he, he did. I don't even think he got fired. No, it just like he I'm quit. Not gonna, yeah. He was like, "Hey, this is bad for the program. No. This kind of distraction is not needed. I need to remove myself from the situation." But would you agree with me? And I'm only asking. There's In a terms, difference between being preseason on the on the court, on the field to you know what everybody's gone. I'm just going to go down and say hi. We got the grandkids down there. We got, yeah, all, I, it's just different to me. You can have a yes to both okay. questions. That's and that's fair. And the yes to the question is is hey, this is after the fact. The game's over. He shows up. He's going to be. He's hanging. He's there purely because he's with his family. Yes, I get that. But guess what? There's also a question of, hey, should he be anywhere near any program? And you can also say, yes, this guy should not be near any program. And he he himself gets it. He himself understands that. He himself understands that after what happened at Baylor, but, he will always be an absolute lightning rod for what he, happened at Baylor. But see, and, and that's and that's something that he needs to look at that situation and just say, "Hey, I'm going full incognito." I will see you guys in the parking lot after the game, and nobody's going to know it's me. But see, the headlines are even deceiving. Oklahoma investigating disgraced ex Baylor coach Bryles being on the field with Sooners assistant Jeff Levy. What they don't say there is you think, what do you mean he was on the field? It was two hours after yeah. the game, and he was there with Jeff Levy, yeah. who happens to be his son in law. Yeah. So, I mean, and we, I get that. But okay. I also get the thing that if I'm Jeff Lebby's father-in-law and I understand the lightning rod that I am for this particular issue, I'm going to sit there and go like, hey, I don't want to put you in, an, in, in a bad position. And so I'm going to maintain a huge distance okay. from this situation. Le hear me out here. Hear me out here when it comes to leadership. Because I thought... Venables and Castiglione failed in leadership here. They played to public opinion and gave them what they wanted. Here's what I would have done. And I think I think great. I, I bet Tom Osborne did this more than you'd ever know. And that is have the back of your assistant coach or your player pull you aside and say, here's the deal. Oh, I know what happened yes. because I know the situation. Yes. So he, he, here's there. what I would have done. If I'm, if I'm Brent Venables, if I'm Joe Castiglione, I'll say, listen, I understand why you're upset. I really do. We're going to look at this and say it was well after the game. It's his father-in-law. He was in town for a game. They were having a simple conversation. And then say, you know what? There was nobody else in the stadium. He was there for the game. We knew he was there for the game. And then after that, you had, then, you could, then you bring Jeff Levy in and say, here's the deal. We can't have this happen again. Right? I mean, I, we, you, you have a guy's and back, and, and I then you turn it. around and, and say. you're talking about perfection of handling a situation yes, and that would have been it. But great this, leaders know how to do that. Great leaders know how to do that because you can't preach a family attitude and say, well, you got to love your football family, but you can't love your father-in-law. You can't, you can't do that. Art Bryles needs to understand the fucking situation and not put his son-in-law and the university of Oklahoma in that situation. Okay, to begin do you really with. think Oklahoma didn't know Art Bryles is in the stadium that night? 
They knew. Exactly. So you knew there's no way that they didn't know Art Bryles was there because when Jeff Levy said, hey, I need four or five, six tickets, hey, just let you know, my father-in-law is going to be there tonight. I get it, and I, I, I understand that. My point is, if I'm Art Bryles, I'm not there. That's fine. But the, I mean, then, then that should have been determined beforehand. It should have been. That's my that's my whole point here. All I'm saying is, I'm saying, if I'm Jeff I'm Levy, saying, I'm saying, fuck you, Joe Gastiglione. I'm saying all Screw the, you, I Brent get Venables. It, I'm out of here. But I'm saying all of these parties, Jeff Levy, Art Bryles, and the University of Oklahoma allowed themselves to be put into this position. And if those three parties had a better moral code and a better understanding of the optics here, this situation wouldn't have happened. So I I think both are guilty here. Oklahoma didn't have to give him tickets. Oklahoma said, Jeff, here's the deal. And that's my point. Yeah. Oklahoma could have stepped up beforehand. Jeff Levy could have stepped up beforehand. And Art Bryles goddamn well should have stepped up beforehand because he did before the Grambling thing. When he signed on as an O coordinator at Grambling, all of a sudden... No, I mean, he was head coach at Grambling. It was not head coach. He was, a, he no, was an assistant. No, it was going to be head coach. Okay, either way, he was going to be... A coach at Grambling. And when it happened and shit hit the fan from a media standpoint, what's it say here? You no, you're broke. right. You you were right. Offensive coordinators. I stand God damn right. I'm right. I'm there, always there you right. What there, am you I are. not you're, you're right? You're the smartest fucker I know. Am I ever not right? Well. Rare. Rarely. Once in a while. Well, once, once in a great while. You, you were it correct. You. It was offensive coordinator. My point is... He's been in this situation up, before. I hear you laughing, he right? understands the optics of this. Art Bryles knows he's not stupid. He should have known, hey, fuck, if somebody sees me at the game, this is going to look bad, and he should have understood that. I, I actually saw the picture. I would have never known it was Art Bryles. I mean, the dude. Um, I did, too. He looks He looks like he is aged with, 40 but, years. But he had, like, the goat, the long Santa yeah. Claus. I mean, I think he was trying to go incognito, don't I you? I did not recognize him at all. Yeah, I, I mean, it was probably this guy going, oh, because he knew that Art Bryles was his father-in-law. He put two and two together, but yeah. if you, you know how you mentioned how if I if, saw the picture, I did not yeah. recognize. It's them. like Zach Bryan walking to a bar. You're like, eh, I think it's Zach Bryan. It might be Zach. I, I don't know if it's Zach Bryan or not, but uh, yeah. So that it'd be interesting to see. Jeff Levy's already taken some heat from Sooner fans anyway because they didn't dominate SMU, and it'd be interesting to see Lincoln if he, Riley. And Art Bryles, he is not. He's not, but he did pretty well with Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. He left. He left Ole Miss to be part of. And I could. I can make an argument here. Ole Miss hasn't been the same since Jeff Levy left Ole Miss. Well, maybe he's got a place to go when he leaves OU. And, <laughs> it, 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 I, I, w- I would tend to agree with you on that. Uh, Centrus Federal Credit Union has been calling Omaha home for o- over 85 years, serving over 126,000 members in Omaha Council Bluffs, Grand Island, North Platte areas. Centrus believes in improving the quality of life in the communities they serve, from checking and savings accounts, certificates, home, auto, personal, and home equity loans, to having a full, strong focus on community support, Support in financial education. Central Federal, Centrist Federal Credit Union is your full service credit union. The members, they are members helping members. Central Fe, Centrist Federal Credit Union, I'll spit this out, is a proud sponsor of the Doc's Diagnosis, which you can watch by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Federal insured by NCUA, equal ha- uh, housing lender. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because Wednesday night is behind the point spread. Brought to you by Betfred Sports, and it is the best show on the internet. It's the from, fucking best show on the from internet. From an information standpoint. We are no, gonna from do, an entertainment standpoint. Oh my too. God, we are going to do a deep dive on the college turnovers. I can't wait. It's gonna, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Rob has got like, a boner like right now. He's here. got a like, boner right now. I've got like <laughs> Billy Ball numbers. <laughs> it's like we're getting after it with, <laughs> with Scott on Wednesday. Hey, uh, this Friday, Owen, pop yourself up there. You got a, your next single's coming out your third single off your uh, upcoming debut album what is the song coming out 
She it's called She's Got Nothing and it's coming out on Friday. It's a really good song. I'm Okay, does Owen put out anything that's not a really good song? No, he doesn't. And if you want to hear his first two singles, uh, Tonight I Feel Fine and Princess of the Heartland, just go to spot, uh, Spotify. Uh, Any, you, anywhere you stream the music. Yeah, anywhere you stream the music. Go check it out. And the new one, uh, She's Got Nothing Left, is out on Friday. Uh, it's a really good song. They were had band practice here earlier, and I listened we to it. We were listening. Yeah. It was great. Um, thanks to Husker Max for distributing this podcast. Head to HuskerMax.com for the latest news and opinions from a variety of voices. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and now TikTok. And if you have a question for Dr. Rob, DocTalkSports at gmail.com. For Owen Justice, who's producing this show, for Dr. Rob Zadisky, I'm Travis Justice. We'll see you next week on the Doc Talk Podcast presented by Betfred Sports.